Well, check your time. It's 8.19 in the morning, mm -hmm. West African time, and you're watching an Inauguration Day special here on Arise News. That's right. President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu will today be sworn in as the 16th president of Nigeria. The official ceremony at Eagle Square in Abuja will happen amidst tight security. In attendance will be a presidential delegation from the U.S., led by U.S. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Marcia Fudge. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has arrived in Nigeria for the inauguration. He joins other heads of state and government from around the world, including Rwandan President Kagame, who will be attending the event marking the seventh consecutive democratic transition in Nigeria's history. Well, for more, let's bring in the governing All Progressives Congress Party chieftain, Dr. Cairo Jugbo, uh, who is also, uh, he likes to be called uh, an advocate of uh, truth. truth. Good to see you. A soldier of truth. A soldier, soldier of, of truth. truth. Yeah. Mm, good to see you, and uh, yeah. thanks for your time as always. Thank you. Uh, it looks like congratulations are in order for today, right? Thank you very much, and congrats to, to you, because this is for all Nigerians. Um, uh, if yeah. it didn't go this way, it could have gone the other way and there would be no peace. Now there is peace, all Nigerians are, should be happy. We should thank God, we should celebrate that we were able, no matter how you look at it, it's a success story. A transition is taking place. That is what is important. Now we build from here. Uh, and in building from here, um, let's go back to uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's speech. Uh, that's a man who... Uh, was in Kenya as president at the time where they had one of the most fractious elections and how he was able to bring every party together to the extent that <clears throat> at the end uh, we saw him even rooting uh, for the opposition main candidate Raila Odinga against his own vice uh, president uh, at that time mm -hmm. who is now president uh, William, uh, Ruto. William Ruto. Now speak to us on the Kenya example uh, and put that in perspective on what we expect to see when uh, Bola Chinobu is finally sworn in. <coughs> Very good. <coughs> now, let's take it the Nigerian perspective because I, 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 I'm, I'm a Nigerian and uh, my loyalty uh, in everything I do is to Nigeria. And an African. And so, uh, so we can look at uh, the African. Uh, uh, yes, but Nigeria first. Now, let's take it from 1999. Obasanjo was the president in 1999. He was brought out of prison. He didn't nominate himself. A group of people came and said, look, we want you to be president. And he made it. And he was there. Now, when Obasanjo was handed over, he had the same arrangement. He picked uh, Yaradua. Yaradua didn't pick himself. One, one, one thing led to the other. And a politician, for the first time, from the South South became president. That's good luck, Jonathan. Now, after that, people went to uh, uh, Buhari. Buhari had said he wasn't contesting again. Buhari wasn't a politician per se. But uh, people put, it, put the whole arrangement together for him. Hmm. But this case is a different scenario. This man, Bola Ametunubu, had the plan for over 30 years, worked on it, planned it, executed his plan, and became president. Now something is obvious. He's ready for the job. And he knows what to do. He's very smart. And what do we expect from him? If you are talking about the election that brought, uh, uh, that, uh, that brought about the inauguration of today, without apology to anybody, and I have said this even on this, on this station severally, mm. It's one of the best elections I have seen, especially in my state, Delta State. I'm telling you, a lot of things happened in Delta State. The results we were expecting didn't go so. The people were allowed to vote. Let me tell you, these beavers, I have said so. If I have the opportunity, it is something that must be perfected. If you perfect these beavers, it will stop electoral corruption. I try... I will tell you. I, I, normally, I really, I really, I really... Normally in uh, Delta uh, State... Dr. Cairo, I, I yes. know, I, I understand the point. And the good. point for many Nigerians now is that some of the issues are already in court. Uh, yes. uh, let's not uh, 
really. It's a beautiful day, as you said. You said uh, congratulations yes. to us. Uh -huh. So it's a moment that we should rally. Yes, exactly. And not just you. Yes. Uh, uh, Professor Adeni, uh, Dr. Uh, Sam Amadi, they all said the same thing, that uh, the man who is about to be sworn in yes. as president is a fine gentleman who is very good at head hunting. Uh, now, and, planning. Uh, and planning. And planning. And we also heard, heard that from uh, 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 President Bo uh, uh, Babangida, former President Babangida. Yes. Yes. Now, now, speak to us, because yes. for those who may not know why the elder statesman and even yourself have said that this man is a tactician and a man who is very good politically speaking, what are those things uh, that we may want to know about yeah. President-elect Tinubu? Yesterday, I was reading um, a, a newspaper. And in that newspaper, there was a picture of Tinubu, Abiola, and uh, the late Ab and, uh, Abacha. Tinubu was standing behind uh, Abacha and he was uh, and, uh, uh, Abiola and Abacha were working together. That was too, too late. He was learning. He mm -hmm. learned and he learned very well. So the things he learned in, during that period, he knew how to balance the military, the politicians, and the business community. If you look at it, that is what went for him in this election. He was able to balance everybody. He was able to take mm. care of those who opposed him. He was able to nurture those who supported him. He was able to give attention to those who were, uh, who, 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 who were, uh, who were so to say, say, don't look. He brought everybody up. And then the greatest tactics of all was to make sure that where he saw danger, he was able to intervene to make sure that the dangers, that the danger he saw in those particular areas did not uh, become uh, cancerous. Mm -hmm. How do, right. what, do I, what do I mean? Mm -hmm. He was able to manage those in the uh, Labour Party. He was able to manage those in PDP. He was able to manage those in APC. Are we and still talking about uh, incoming president, Bola Tinubu? I mean, when you say he managed the people in for the election, party, and yes, and you ask me the question. When you say, that, yes, when how, what makes him exactly. a great planner? What makes yes. him a right. great yeah. planner? And that is what I'm just what he okay. did. So he, he went beyond his own party, party the APC, every day to, to be able to, to manage the system. So that in, in what you, way, really, did he manage the system within the Labour Party and, of course, the PDP? Uh, of course, in managing them, he was able to make sure that. The attack from the from, from, from the members of this party was not uh, they will not overwhelm him, right. and that is the genius in him. And uh, let me tell you, when yesterday Buhari said that the best candidate won, mm. there is something there is something in that statement. This man will be able to put together a team that can rescue Nigeria, and that is what is important. The biggest problem we have in Nigeria today is poverty. And the president elect knows that he should be able to know what to do. And that the big plan will be how to put money in the pockets of people. Mm -hmm. And for him to do that, he must fight corruption. And to fight corruption, there is a, the easiest way is prevention because as a medical doctor you are told we are taught that prevention is better than cure absolutely so now we have to make sure that people are not given the opportunity to steal if people don't have the opportunity to steal corruption will be reduced and if people are not given the opportunity to steal within this government mm -hmm. then there will be money to to to, to, to use to make uh, the people work and then that we can now pay for education for our students you see, today the system you have it is uh, uh, federal government education is free, is free. This is free. That's not how it works overseas. Overseas, you are given grants, and then when you come out, there is job for you. Mm. And then as you continue to work, you begin to pay. Right. And then you see, Tulubu said uh, three months ago he was attending a, a function in Lagos, and he made a statement that you now looked at the business community. He said, "Look, Jimovia, he said, look, we are going to find a way." to make it possible that when you want to build a house, you don't just take 
the bought money once one day and go mm. and build the house. Or you want to buy a car. You take 10 million, 20 million and go and buy a car. You should be able to uh, we'll structure it in such a way government and everybody will mm. partner and that's the sort of government is going to run all and right. people will be happy the credit economy we will still come to all of that Thank you. Uh, on the issue of corruption let's even yeah. take that and how you think or believe a president uh, incoming president Bola Tinubu should tackle uh, corruption I recall uh, years ago former president Goodluck Jonathan actually <laughs> said look you don't fight corruption by firefighting why don't you plug the loopholes exactly. that allow for corruption to thrive? And you just mentioned, you know, one prevention of those better prevention than uh, better than cure. Yeah. Uh, speak to that and what your agenda would be for Tinubu to unify uh, the country. We heard from uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, former president of Kenya, actually said, look, President uh, Tinubu, has a lot on his table as far as the unifying the country is concerned. He must see himself as the father of the nation. Before the elections, long before the elections, during the elections, and even post-elections, the fault lines in Nigeria seem to have widened uh, somewhat. Exactly. How best do you think uh, President Tinubu should go about unifying the country? Some have said, look, for the Southeast, for example, a symbolic move would be to free Namde Kano you are from the Niger Delta. How can he give the Niger Delta people a sense of belonging? How will he do that with the North Central, with the North East, with the North West, with every part of the country? Yesterday, the elder statesman, Chief E.K. Clark, wrote, commented on President uh, Buhari's uh, farewell speech. And he was very specific about the system point agenda of Pandev, where I come from, and that the, government, the Buhari's government didn't do anything about the, the interests of Niger Delta. He, speaks, he also wrote about the Petroleum Industry Act that is currently uh, running and then what the Niger Delta people expect. Now, when you also look at the North, the North uh, used to be uh, uh, very calm and very united. You can see that most of, if you look at the security issues in this country today, almost 60-70% is now in the northern part of the country. Mm -hmm. So what, is, what will Tunubu do to address it? When we were leading, myself, Chief Clark, the late body, when we were leading the hunt for the Chippewa girls, the international community, especially the embassy of, uh, uh, of Switzerland and uh, the Red Cross, they told us something. They said, look, there is no crisis that will not end on the dialogue table. They said, there's no war. At the end of the day, it is dialogue. So, but you don't treat insecurity as child's play. You, the, the government has to go all out to take control. Because in this country, normally, if you see the police and you see the army, they, they used to command respect. They, once you see them, you know that authority has come. They, they were the only people who were permitted to carry arms. So the, the first thing Tunubu has to do, the president has to do, is to make sure that various groups, in whatever capacity they are, total disarmament. If he's going to do it by dialogue, so be it. If he's going to do it by force, so be it. And if you do not have security, you won't have peace. Then what happens to people that have commercialized insecurity? Uh -huh. The terrorists themselves, the Boko Haram, the Icewipe, they have gained a lot financially. When you now, when you now disarm them, how are you going to control? What are they going to do? That is where again you have, you have to have, uh, you have to have a, a method where we can re, re, re educate them, reorientate them, and then re de radicalize them. When that process happens and there is enough money, they can be pushed to school. Mm. What punitive methods are we going to put in place after the down tools? Are we going to treat them as, as criminals, send them to jail, kill them, or punish them, or sentence them according to the laws of the land? These are the questions and the answers that the president elect will have to, to answer. If you put that aside, mm. we go back to the uh, southwest. Even yesterday, a group went to seize a radio station asking for 
Yoruba uh, nation. Uh, nation. And here is a Yoruba man that is to be inaugurated today. So what does it tell you? Just like you are saying, there's a lot of, uh, 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 there's a lot of uh, dissatisfaction in the corporate existence and in the corporate nature of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. How do we solve it? Restructuring. How do you deal with the Southeast question? The, the Southeast yeah, question the issue is, of even, is, even, is, even, is even easier to solve. Right. Now, the problem in the, south, in the Southeast is that some persons are taking advantage of the, 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 the corruption in the system. Uh, a, a, a lot of the issues in the Southeast, they, they have been uh, uh, commercialized. I tell you this. Hmm. If, uh, believe me, you. if today you call uh, a plebiscite, say uh, Easterners, go and vote, whether you want independent or not, nobody will vote for independence. So, hmm. as long as we know that, then how do you now check these people who are uh, making trouble? One, you have to improve government. The state governments have to improve themselves. The state governments have to begin to, 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 to show that you are not in government to enrich yourself. You must begin to allow the laws of the land to run in, this, in, in the states. The governors should stop behaving like gods. And that's one area that many Nigerians miss, uh, because hmm. sometimes everything points out to the center when actually the, the agitation rest within the within states. The states, within yeah. the states yeah. You see, when people... And that's why you talk yes. about... You have just mentioned restructuring, restructuring. earlier. When people, talk about, when people talk about that. Nigeria, remember, if you, look at, if you look at the Revenue Mobilization and Physical Commission, the way they, they, you go every month, you go to Abuja. Abuja gets, uh, say, almost 50%. Now, everybody is looking at what Abuja is doing with the 50%. Nobody wants to know. Nobody asks what the states and the local governments are doing with the balance 50 percent. So, and then people are now asking, and which I believe I belong I belong to the class asking that the federal size of the federal government should be reduced. Uh -huh. Now, if you reduce it, are we going to keep having the same experience like we are having now, when in the states there is complete lack of accountability? Mm. Well, you, you know, um, let's see if we can actually uh, wrap up on uh, that big document, uh, Renewed Hope. Uh, so it's safe now to say it's a government of renewed hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will be the indices the yeah. Tinubu administration will be measured his, on. His uh, contract with the people. So, yes. so, so the moment is here. Yeah. It is D-Day. And uh, in some few minutes from now, uh, the, the whistle will be blown for him to start. Activation point. So what are the firsts, the firsts that you want to see on the plate uh, for Tinubu uh, on his renewed hope journey? The, the, the first thing he should do, as far as I'm concerned, when he comes into government, is to structure his government, his cabinet. I, I believe by now he will have done a lot of work. And in doing so, capability should be the watch word, where people know that he's very good at identifying individuals who can have things done. Mm. If you don't have a good team, or if you create a team with sentiment, if you create a team by, by, by pleasing people, if you create a team and you bring in people who cannot do their, their, their job, and then you behave, you, you leave somebody you know has failed in a position for eight years, and you don't change him, the result is not going to be different. But I do believe that Tunubu will be different in this matter. Once he puts the current team in place, then he will be good to run. Mm -hmm. And then, you see, he also, like we know, he works almost 24 hours. And I believe that if he keeps doing that, he's going to get it right. Then, education. If he has to take education very, very seriously, because if you educate the child, if you educate the mind, you educate, you educate the nation. Mm. If I, 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 you look at the people who are, uh, the, this terrorism, even the IPOP people, a lot of them, they didn't go to school. A lot of them. If you, if you send people to school and you educate them appropriately, mm. it, is, if, it is more difficult to radicalize them. It's right. not, I'm not saying that once you go to school, you cannot be radicalized. No. 
but it will be easier. A lot of Nigerians are working in Shell. If you ask them now, come out of Shell or come out of uh, NMPC, go and carry arms and go and fight, would they go? They won't go. So we must create a, in, 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 in education, human capital development, and uh, 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 education, human capital development, right. and the issue of job creation. Yeah. These are the three things that will improve Nigeria. Absolutely. And above all, mm. he must pay attention to power. There you go. To there power. Go. power. Yes. So we're talking mm. about the electricity. Well. electricity. Yeah, mm. Because once we put power in place, once we have it, industries will run. Cottage industry. Look, the biggest, when I tell people, the biggest advantage Nigeria has, and I am told in the next 50 years, will be third. About uh, 400 million Nigerians. Million Nigerians. Yes. And will be mm. the third. Third mm. uh, uh, most uh, populous nation, most popular, uh, nation Earth. in the world. Mm. What is the advantage of China today? They are happy. All they did was right. look, create industries. You want, you want they print the Bible. <laughs> they print this table <laughs> and I show you is from China. <laughs> everything the shape, everything. Not too sure it's from China, but very very quickly before uh, we wrap this morning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, foreign leaders I mean are coming into Nigeria, they are already arriving to witness uh, this great day. In the last administration, yes. in the last eight years, many Nigerians have said, look, especially experts who understand, uh, you know, diplomacy and all of that. They said Nigeria's foreign policy was not exactly uh, too uh, clear, Artists, yeah. you, know, you know, well articulated in a way that we understand exactly how we engage, not just with our neighboring, you know, West African countries, the rest of Africa, and of course, uh, the global community. What kind of foreign engagement should Tinubu's administration have in a way that will bring Nigeria back, or you know, uh, as the, a powerhouse in in Africa. Yes, uh, if you listen to the United States and the Europeans, what they said in the last two weeks, they want to preserve the world order, and it's very very important. We need. Let me tell you, we need the cooperation of America and Europe, and they have made it very clear that the world order must be preserved. That is a statement even Blinken made, you know, when he spoke with uh, the president-elect. Mm. The other one is they want inclusiveness in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, when they talk about the, the old world order, once these nations are talking to you like that, you know that they love you, they'll be looking at you. They want to see what you want to do. Mm. And I, I, I tell you something, whether you like it or not, uh, the system of, uh, if you look at China, look at Russia, look at America, look at Europe, in the long run, in the long run, if you cooperate with America and Europe, you'll be better for it. Yeah, but it has to be mutually beneficial. I yeah, mean, in that, yeah. and in that yes. cooperation, and, of course. Yes, and, yeah, and that is very right. important. Right. Uh, Cairo Jibo is pro-term National Coalition for Peace and Unity. And, of course, he says he's a soldier of truth. I'm a soldier of truth. And, of course, I tell you the uh, truth. Of course, an <laughs> APC yeah. chieftain joining us on this special May 29 inauguration day. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, madam.